What's up guys, welcome back. Now, I'm coming at you from E3 Los Angeles. I'm actually in Los Angeles right now. I'm recording this from my hotel in lovely Los Angeles, California at E3 2019. Now, this has been a very interesting and exciting E3 so far. We had the Nintendo Direct where there was a lot of announcements there and of course we had the new Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel that was announced for the Nintendo Switch to be coming at a later time and of course we had some in-depth impressions and gameplay footage of Luigi's Mansion 3, Zelda Link's Awakening and a lot of third party games. Some of them were rumored before and now confirmed like The Witcher 3 for example even though we saw it very briefly. Other games such as Spyro and of course a lot more footage of Astral Chain which was not playable on the E3 show floor but course was looking really good in what they did show and to be clear I'm gonna be at E3 for all three days this year and I experienced quite a bit for day one I did not get a chance to play Final Fantasy 7 remake but I will be trying to play that game on day two if not on day three and I will be playing Pokemon Sword and Shield on Thursday which would be day three for me. I'm also planning on playing Doom Eternal, which is not available to play for the Switch, but I did get a chance to play Wolfenstein Youngblood, and I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. So basically, E3 is just like how it always has been. It's very busy, lots of things to do, lots of things to play, lots of people to see, and I tried a very unique 3D AR experience called the Unreal Garden, which is kind of like this 3D atmospheric room that you go in. You can touch various objects in the room all in 3D and appears in AR in these goggles they give you all interactive with head tracking and it can also track your finger movement. So that was also very cool to try. But getting on to Luigi's Mansion 3, it was one of the games I was being offered with the Warp Pipe Pass along with Pokemon Sword and Shield. So I did reserve my time to play Luigi's Mansion 3 on the show floor. So you don't have to wait at the very end of the line. You can actually come in at a certain time and just cut right in front of people and go right to play the game. Of course, you still need to wait a little bit to play it. The waiting time has dropped down quite a bit. I think I waited only for about 20 minutes or so to play the game. So it was really cool how they laid out the entire experience of Luigi's Mansion 3. They had the entire room all dark and everything with all the, the different colors and lots of greens and purples and everything to really highlight the atmosphere of the game. They really did an excellent job doing that. And I really enjoyed the asymmetrical gameplay that they had in the game because they introduced this new side character, Ghoul Luigi, if that's how you say it. But anyway, he's basically this Luigi double of yourself and he's made up of this green goo basically. If you've ever seen the movie Ghostbusters, you know that they have that character named Slimer, which is a character that's made up of this stuff called ectoplasm. So it's kind of like that, I think, is what they're trying to go for here. Kind of like a Ghostbusters thing. And this secondary character, which looks just like you, Luigi, is all made up of this green slime, basically. So first of all, getting back to the basic controls of the game, they did bring out that you can use motion controls as far as turning the character and aiming your plunger dart weapon. But for the demo, I was only using the analog stick for this. But basically, use the A button to kind of shine your flashlight and shock the ghost and stun them. And then you use the ZR button or ZL button to either vacuum them in with the ZR button or to blow them away with his EL button and then once you grab them with the vacuum you can press the A button you need to create a resistance force with your analog stick by pressing the opposite direction pulling them back and forth basically and pressing the A button will smash the ghosts back and forth until you defeated them basically and then you also have the plunger dart weapon which you can use with the Y button and shoot that at various objects and you can use it in conjunction so a good example of this combination of buttons would be Basically, you shine your flashlight on someone with the A button, you stun them, you shoot the plunger dart weapon on their shield, and then immediately you press the ZR button to vacuum that plunger back towards you, and then in turn it'll pull the shield off of the enemy, so it'll leave them open to attack. That is one mechanic that they displayed very nicely in this demo. I thought that was very cool that you could actually do that. And then later on you would use the same mechanic to defeat the boss in the game. And how you used your secondary character to do puzzles was also very fun. And you would do this by pressing down on the right analog stick and it would make your secondary Luigi, green Luigi, appear to go do puzzles and open up certain areas for you. Like for example, Ghoul Luigi can go through spikes whereas regular Luigi can't, which in turn will open up other paths for you like elevators for example where he can control on one side and let you down and then in turn you will press the right analog stick twice to go back to regular Luigi mode so overall I thought the demo was great 
very high quality and very fun and the game looks a lot better than what it did when they first showed it a lot more detail was put in the game a lot better textures better lighting the game actually looks way better than what i was expecting to be honest with you because it did look rather simple when they showed it last year in 2018 and the nintendo representatives were asking for feedback for the controls so there was one thing that i noticed that the controls were a little bit too loose in regards to aiming your plunger i thought luigi reacted a little bit too sensitively to turning and aiming basically i think that could be controlled a little bit more smoothly so you're not overcompensating i did have a little bit of difficulty aiming the plunger dart on the boss so the nintendo representative did say they are working on that so overall i'll give the demo at e3 for luigi's mansion 3 probably a b plus to an a minus grade if i were to rate it at this point i thought it was very well done with a few kinks here and there but overall a very fun very deep and satisfying experience if you are at e3 i definitely suggest you try it out it's great and you'll definitely enjoy your time with it and next up i do want to talk about the sega genesis mini i did get a chance to play this for the first time i thought this was fantastic if you've never played the genesis the original sega genesis the feel of this thing is exactly like the original console the actual controller itself feels just like how they made the original Sega Genesis all the way back when it first came out in 1989. Those original Sega Genesis controllers with the three buttons and everything, it feels exactly the same. What I mean is, is that when you press the D-pad in, when you press the buttons in, it has a certain weight, has a certain give to the buttons basically. So when you spread your thumb across the D-pad where you can press it in really nicely and really dig deep into it, just like how you did on the original Sega Genesis. They nailed the feel of that controller perfectly. And the games I tried out was Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition, Streets of Rage 2, and Mega Man The Wily Wars, which was a top one on my list to try because that game is basically like the Super Mario All-Stars collection from the Super Nintendo. We updated the graphics of Mega Man 1, 2, and 3, and so forth, and make them look like 16-bit versions of those original 8-bit Mega Man games. So I tried that out, I tried Mega Man 2 in Mega Man The Wily Wars, and it looks great, plays great, plays just like the original one, but of course looks better. And this was a game that you could only play on the Sega channel, which was something that was a paid subscription for Genesis games. So that is an awesome addition to the Sega Genesis Mini, makes this an automatic must-own when it is released finally and I'm so happy I got a chance to play this piece of hardware first at E3 before it is released in September. The only negative thing about it of course is that it does not come with the 6 button Genesis controller but I didn't have any problem playing Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition. Basically all you have to do is press the start button if you want to use your kicks and press the start button again if you want to use your punch buttons. I know it sounds crazy but if you're good at Street Fighter you won't really care that much. However, of course, I would have preferred the six button Genesis controller, but I must say the three button controller did feel really good. I'm not gonna lie, it felt really good, guys. It felt outstanding. This might end up being the very best mini console ever released so far, even better than the Super Nintendo Classic that Nintendo released in 2017. It is that good. And then after that, I got a chance to play Wolfenstein Youngblood on the Nintendo Switch. The Nintendo representatives did not allow any video footage of that game to be taken, only screenshots. So I took like one screenshot or two screenshots. They were kind of blurry. But I think the main reason they didn't want footage to be taken of the game is because there is some choppy frame rate in the game right now. But overall, I'd say the game plays good. It plays just like Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus. And if you're familiar with Doom and Wolfenstein 2 on the Nintendo Switch already, the game does look a little bit blurry, but from what I played it isn't as blurry as Wolfenstein 2 the new Colossus but the demo is approximately 20 minutes long and of course it stars some younger female characters in the game and I talked to the Bethesda representative there he said it's kind of like a side story kind of like a sequel all at the same time but either way I think if you liked that game on the switch or on PC or PlayStation 4 or Xbox I think you would like this game as well it's basically the same type of gameplay first person shooter very fast paced tight corridors and very visceral so if you like that kind of stuff I do think you'll like that game as well all right guys that's all i got for day one of e3 of 2019 i am planning on doing it day two hopefully i get to play final fantasy 7 remake and doom eternal and if you did enjoy this e3 video please hit the like button subscribe for more and i'll talk to you very soon in the next video have a great day